What's your name again? Ali. Ali. Okay. I'm Kevin and Karen. Nice to meet you. We are here in uh, Luxor, Egypt, and this is our our guest house. It's sort of different from Cairo. Uh, it's more like a province. Yeah. Hey, thank you, my friend. Nice to meet you. I'll see you tomorrow. Assalamu. Bye bye. First impression of Luxor, totally different from Cairo. Uh, it's more relaxed here. Lots of uh, greenery all over the place, like lots, lots of uh, farm. Yeah, here's our, uh, here's our Airbnb. I don't know her, how to turn the lights in. Here, let's see it here. Woo! It's a very colorful home. <laughs> and meet, meet our host. All right, so we're gonna have our dinner prepared by Mr. Walid. <laughs> soup. Soup. Vegetable soup. Mm -hmm. And this is spinach. Okay. And this is tzucchini mm -hmm. and tomato stuffed with rice. Oh, okay. So we eat it again. Okay. Exactly. And this is salad. Mm -hmm. And this is vegetables with chicken. Okay. And this is basmati rice. Okay. You have to eat everything. <laughs> so much food. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where to start. So we have a soup. We have chicken over here, uh, which he cooked like underground earlier. Tomato stuffed with rice, zucchini stuffed with rice, and I think uh, bell pepper stuffed with rice. And we have salad over here. And everything is uh, home cooked by him and his and his wife. Yeah, so this is a this is a treat. Sorry for the light lightning, but yeah, very very full, very very tasty, and I'm tired. I'm gonna go to sleep. So we'll see you tomorrow. So this is our first official day in uh, Luxor. Today we're gonna be visiting the Valley of Kings. Uh, we're just waiting for our guide, our driver, Sir Ali. Uh, it's already here. So, yeah. But here's the uh, front of our our guest house, our guest home. Where we're gonna be staying for the next uh, two days. So we only have two days here and we're gonna go back to Cairo. Morning, Ali. Thanks, Morning. Oh yeah, you have a different uh, car? <laughs> good morning. Good morning. How are you good? Good, good. What's your name? My name is Mahmoud. Kevin. I will be your tour guide for today and tomorrow. Kevin awesome. and? Karen. Karen. Nice to meet you. Where do you come from? California. Nice to meet you. Is your first time here? Yes, first time here. So now we're going to uh, Valley of the Kings, right? Exactly. Okay. Ali said you're gonna do abracadabra. Uh -huh. so come yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs>
when they have done a lot of things to be secure and safe, most of the tombs we found it empty. And the, the robbers and the sea people started to search about the treasures since dynasty number 21 means in the... Gosh, a lot of tourists already, huh? They're early. All the tourists are early, man. <laughs> All right, starting our tour here in the Valley of the Kings. There's a lot of people already. A lot of tourists. Well, we're tourists too, but... Yeah. Yeah. The kings and then the most resemble for the queen Hatchip suit. Okay. And then have uh, boots and food. Because the boots and common is the only one tongue with a mummy. From six, five and six, the one of the beautiful decorated one. City is the most beautiful colorful one. This is why they created extra tickets. Because it's two beautifuls and one is stayed with mummy. The only mummy stayed in the Valley of the Kings belongs to Tutankhamun. Situated on the west bank of the Nile River in Luxor, Egypt, the Valley of the Kings is an archaeological site that functioned as the final resting place for pharaohs, kings, and nobles during the New Kingdom era, 1550 to 1070 BC. This tomb featured detailed paintings and hieroglyphics that tell us their story and beliefs regarding afterlife and those who are buried within. Although the tombs were looted in the past, they still provide valuable insight into ancient Egyptian burial customs, religions, and culture. The Valley of Kings stands as a testament to the creativity and skill of ancient Egypt and remains an important destination for both archaeological research and tourism. Alright, so what to expect when you're going to the uh, Valley of the Kings? Um, there's a lot of tourists, about 5,000 to 6,000 a day. So plan your day accordingly. Um, either you go very early in the morning before they get here or towards the end of the day. Um, they'll give you a ticket, uh, the general ticket, good for three tombs. And you have to pay extra if you want to visit the other decorated tombs. But yeah, you, when you go inside, you'll find a lot of hieroglyphics, uh, which tells about the story, you know, up regarding afterlife, their beliefs. Oh yeah, one more tip: bring a hat. Don't forget your sunglasses, and brings uh, brings a lot of water. It gets uh, very very uh, hot. So that should be it. So we're gonna move on to our next stop. We're gonna go to the the temple for Queen Hatshepsut. Oh, by the way, Queen Hatshepsut is also buried here. Uh, she's the only queen that is buried um, in the Valley of the Kings because she's one of the rulers. Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut. The Hatshepsut. Queen Hatshepsut. Queen Hatshepsut. Hatsh. Say Hatsh. Hatsh. Suit. Suit. Hatsh. Hatsh. Suit. 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 I think I got it. Hatchup soup. Hatchup soup. Hatchup soup. There you exactly. go. That's how you pronounce it. Hatchup soup. <laughs> The stories behind the pillars, the pillars is just look design is different. The pillars is just normal pillars. Behind it, there are stories, three floors, which is consist of the first floor in the right side talks about the scenes behind the pillars. The scenes talks about the fishing scenes. The left side, we are now in the temp uh, temple of Hatshepsut. 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 I forgot how to pronounce it again. Hatshepsut. And. Uh, yeah, we're gonna explore this for 45 minutes. Our tour guide is gonna wait us over there. But this is the uh, the only queen that is buried um, with the Valley of the Kings. So, yeah. all right. This temple was built in the New Kingdom period to honor Queen Hatshepsut, one of the few female pharaohs of Egypt. Uh, this temple has big terraces and halls with columns, and the main part is carved into the cliff of the valley. 
So who is Queen Hatshepsut and why is she important? Uh, she was known for her political abilities as well as her strong support for art and architecture. Her reign brought a time of peace and prosperity to Egypt and she is considered one of the most accomplished pharaohs in the country's history. Despite her impressive legacy after her death, her successor Tutmosis III attempted to erase all evidence of her rule. However, in the modern times, um, Hatshepsut is recognized as one of the Egypt's most captivating and influential leaders. Alright, that was, that was very interesting. Dude, if it's hot right now, I can't imagine if it's how hot it is during summer. I'm gonna go get something to drink. Our next stop is the Habu Temple, also known as the Mortuary Temple of Ramses III. This temple was built to serve as a place of worship for the gods like Amun-Ra and a memorial to Ramses III himself. This temple complex spans an area of around 50,000 square meters and includes many halls, courtyards, and sacred spaces. So around the walls of the temple, you'll find carvings that illustrate the military campaigns of Ramses III, showing offering made to the gods. The great warrior king who won many many bout battles throughout this time. Um, he ruled for many many years, and also a lot, a lot of um, has a lot of wives and sons. Here they tell the story about his battles. All these people, they decide to come to this country, so cut their hands and send them back to their countries. Why? As a message to let the rest of the army to get afraid and scared from my army and my country and they will never come back again. So you can see the hands, they counted how many hands oh, they have. Hands. So they counted and there are some another soldier right. How many hands? Means thousand hands we have thousand captives. They, thousand both, they cut both hands? Exactly. They cutting the hands and they just counted and this is the braces which is they have shaved heads. This is the braces of the temple holding the feather of the justice and they tell this is the justice for anyone want to destroy the land of Amun-Ra. Ramesses III carved his name deeply to ensure the people in the future would remember him and his accomplishment. I just want to make sure we got his name. To make sure his name will stay <laughs> and survive for We are now inside Karnak Temple, also also known as the largest temple in all of Egypt. And what I'm gonna say, this this place is huge and amazing. Um, I think we made the right call coming here very early before the tourist gets here. Uh, in about 30 minutes, this place will be filled with thousands of people. To see this place up close, there's big columns everywhere. Some of them are well preserved. There's still some colors in it. Karnak Temple is a must place visit. Uh, this temple took around 15,000 years to construct, starting from the 16th century BCE and lasting until the 11th century BCE. Uh, like I said, it's one of the biggest temple of, in all of Egypt, or might be the biggest temple in Egypt. Uh, it's considered one of the most remarkable complexes globally thanks to its impressive architecture, which features enormous columns and intricately designed relics and hieroglyphics. This temple is famous for its several man-made lakes, courtyards, and outdoor spaces that were utilized for religious ceremonies and festivals. So definitely come and check this out. So this is the god Keber or the god Keber. He's the god of the good luck and the good wishes. One of the kings, he saw the god Keber in his dreams and he tell him, you have to stay in front of the scarab and have a wish inside of you and keep it secret between you and yourself and start to roll seven times in this side around the scarab thinking about your wish and you have to keep it secret only for yourself when you finish it you're gonna say the wish again the rest of the legion said your wish will become true and the god heaven he is the god of the good luck and the good wishes not aggressive or gonna bite you like the mommy in the movie <laughs> All right, this is the uh, obelisk of Hatshepsut. Earlier in this video, I talked about how Tutmosis III tried to erase Queen Hatshepsut from history by destroying her name. He even tried to cover up the obelisk with another layer, but eventually the outer layer was destroyed, revealing her name. 
and proved that the temple of hers, Hatshepsut Temple, which was previously a name, actually belonged to her. So there's still some parts of the temple are not finished. Um, they're still working on restoration, rest, restoring them. Um, so hopefully when we come back here, we can see the other parts of the temple. But yeah, this place is amazing. Can't believe we were here. I think we're the we're the second ones here. There's another person that uh, was here before us. All right, so we are now here at Luxor Temple, and I guess we're the first one here because everybody was on the uh, on the other temple where we left at. Just gonna buy our tickets. 180. Egyptian pounds for one person All right, so before we step inside the Luxor temple um, right outside you'll see a line of Sphinx statue This statue were originally placed along the path between Luxor temple and Karnak temple complex uh, Which is located about three kilometers away the, the sphinxes in Luxor temple are about three meters tall and each has a body of a lion with a human's head um, you'll also find the Luxor Temple boat or the sacred Barku shrine nearby. The Barku was believed to be the physical representation of the god and was carried through the temple complex by priests during the Aupet festival. Uh, nowadays, this Luxor Temple boat is an important historical and cultural object and it's a popular tourist attraction in the temple complex. Uh, it's offer a fascinating look into how ancient Egyptian used religious symbols and rituals to strengthen political power and authority. Uh, King Louis number nine. And nowadays if you go to Paris, you're gonna see the original copy of yeah, this one in Concord. The temple is definitely a must visit. It was an important religious center in ancient Egypt dedicated to God Amun. However, over time, this temple was modified and used by different culture and religion, which have left their mark on the site. Beside the ancient Egyptians, we have the Greeks and Romans, uh, Christians and Muslims. Died mosque. He was one of the holy persons who came from Saudi Arabia and he just put his mosque inside and they didn't they remove it. During the excavation at Luxor Temple, a large number of preserved statues were found underground, including many of the pharaohs and other prominent figures of from ancient Egypt. Uh, many of these statues are now displayed at the Luxor Museum and Egyptian Museum in Cairo, as well as other museums around the world. If you guys want to find out about more about Luxor Egypt, I suggest you guys visit yourself. Uh, to make most of your trip, consider hiring a tour guide. I have included Mahmoud's contact information in my description below in case you are interested in using his service during your visit. So I want to do the hot air balloon ride, unfortunately we're not able to do it so the next best alternative is the boat ride down the Nile River. We're gonna sail the Nile River. <laughs> Alright so we're gonna be going to the uh, Banana Island. How far is the Banana Island from here, my friend? Uh, by boat like this, maybe in half an hour. Okay. In minutes like this. All right. The boat name is? Shaheen. Shaheen. And Captain Hisham and our herbal Karim. Hello, sir. How are you? We finished it new. It's painting. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, brand new? New, yes. Uh, brand new paint. You are the first uh, tourist. Really? Oh, finished. Oh, really? there you go. Yes. And now we're sailing to Banana Island. There you go. Yeah. Hey, you're a natural, man. Yeah, <laughs> like this. Oh, God.
So this is the banana island? The banana island. Thanks, my friend. Yeah. Thank you. Banana trees <laughs> all over the place. When get bigger, we cut it. Put it in the dark room for one week. Be ready for eating. Banana Island. I tried her uh, bananas. Actually, it's, it's sweet. This way? Okay. Uh, we are sailing to the sunset. We're gonna be here for I think an hour or so. And then we're gonna go to the museum. Um, they're preparing uh, tea for us right now. Thank you. See you. Uh. See you. you uh. Alright, we are in the west right now. We're gonna cross the other side of the Nile going to the east. So, uh, ferry will be five Egyptian pounds each. And we're gonna go over there right now. <laughs> Alright, so we're now on the other side. We're gonna go to the uh, Luxor Museum. Entering Luxor Museum. The Luxor Museum has a collection of over 26,000 ancient Egyptian artifacts. Uh, the collection features a wide variety of objects such as statue, relics, jewelry, and pottery, all of which are valuable representation of the culture and artistry of the ancient Egypt. Among the many treasures on display, the museum also houses a remarkably preserved statue that was found uh, beneath the Luxor Temple. Right back at Walid's uh, place, um, we just finished the temple and I can say all the statues over there are well preserved, the details <laughs> It's so amazing. Uh, we went back, we went across back uh, by ferry. Cost about like five uh, Egyptian pounds or equivalent to 16 US, 16 cents US dollars. Grab some lunch, but I'm gonna end the video here. I just wanna say thank you to Walid, our host, um, our driver and all the, our driver Ali, and all the people that make us feel welcome our stay here in uh, Luxor, Egypt. You know, I uh, want to thank you guys. Um, but yeah, we're going to be flying back to Cairo tomorrow. So we'll see you on our next video.